HMS Montrose is the latest Royal Navy warship to set off on a seven-month deployment to the South Atlantic. She'll provide a reassuring presence around the Falklands at a time when Argentina is stepping up the pressure on the UK government to negotiate over sovereignty of the islands. That pressure is only likely to increase with the re-election of President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, who swept to power in a decisive victory in October. Significantly, the geopolitical landscape of the region has also changed since the Falklands conflict in 1982. What people forget is that uh, during the Falklands there was actually a lot of countries in Latin America that didn't like Argentina and were more or less actively supporting the UK, uh, not least Chile. Um, Brazil was uh, sort of quiet but didn't object to British military activities. That's not the case now. There is basically, because of regime changes all over Latin America, there is basically a clean sweep of countries that are backing Argentina in its claim for the Falkland Islands. Brazil has already closed its waters to ships trading with or supplying the Falklands. In 1982, the UK had the support of the United States, but Hillary Clinton has backed the idea of an agreement with Argentina, controversially referring to the Falklands as Las Malvinas, the Argentine name for the islands. These days, 1,200 troops are stationed on the Falklands, supported by typhoons and Royal Navy patrols, which keep the islanders feeling secure. I've never really felt any need for any worry about anything of being here. I feel perfectly safe. We feel really secure with the military and things like that, but like, you never know. The day might come when they'll try again, but hopefully not. As an islander, I feel very safe. I mean, they're just children screaming and shouting. We just need to let them get out of their system. We've got Britain, we want to stay British. Nevertheless, defence cuts could be leaving the islands vulnerable. This was the UK's military strength back in 1982. Once the dust has settled after the latest round of cuts, compare it to today. The UK's military might is significantly less, and we're facing a decade-long gap without aircraft carrier capability. The SDSR, just like in the 1930s, established a 10-year rule. It said, we will predict, we will make a gamble that we can take gaps in capability. The public most noticeably saw the removal of maritime aviation with the decommissioning, rather surprisingly, of Ark Royal and its carrier force. Now that's not a way to conduct a sensible provision of our defence in an uncertain world. Fewer ships doesn't always mean a less effective fighting force. Today's Royal Navy has far more sophisticated capabilities compared with what was available in 1982, but numbers do still matter. If you were in Argentina, and no one is saying they were looking to invade tomorrow, you would say, two years' time, Eurozone looking weak, will the UK have to do more defence cuts? Will they reduce their presence in the Falklands? And you could wargame this and think, yeah, we stand a pretty good chance. And especially they would say to themselves, without aircraft carriers, would the UK be able to physically retake the islands? We seem to have lost the capability of using a Harrier at sea, which is tragic because in the Falklands it wasn't just operating from Hermes and Invincible. Um, they were coming and we were landing them on the deck of flight deck of um, Fearless. Without that type of re flexibility, I really don't see how we can retake the islands, I'm afraid. As oil exploration around the islands continues, the Falklands remain potentially rich in natural resources. On top of existing lucrative fishing rights, it must be a tantalising prospect for the Argentines. It is highly unlikely there would be a decisive end to the political side and then suddenly uh, that's it, we're going to go for the military. I think, we, bearing in mind, people were taken entirely by surprise by the attack in 1982 why should we expect in 2012, 2013, that the Argentinians, were they that minded? Would they give us warning, active warning of an invasion? They wouldn't. The government turned down our request for an interview, but the Foreign Office gave us this statement. We value our wider relationship with Argentina, which is a key partner and important international ally, and do not want the single issue of the Falkland Islands to dominate bilateral relations but there cannot be any negotiations on sovereignty unless and until the islanders so wish. 
258 brave UK servicemen gave their lives in 1982, supporting the proudly British Falkland Islanders. The question is, how long can the political stalemate continue if the Argentines begin to scent weakness in their enemy? Charlotte Cross, Forces News.